Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Victoria here. I'm bringing you the last travel vlog from Florence. If you missed the first three episodes, check them out on my channel. I'm gonna link them in the description the, uh, box down below. I'm giving you tips and tricks on how to visit Florence and make the most of it. I have a video about how to get free entry tickets for some of the Florentine museums. I also went vintage shopping in Florence and hit the flea market and I also visited the Palazzo Vecchio, the Piazzale del Michelangelo and some other sites that I give information on in my previous videos. And in today's episode we are going to visit the Cathedral Complex of Florence and some other sites, so tune in if you are interested in that and let's jump right in! The Cathedral complex can be found on Piazza del Duomo and it includes the Santa Maria del Fiore Cathedral, the Baptistery and Giotto's Campanile. These three buildings are part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Baptistery of St. John, standing immediately in front of the cathedral, is the ancient religious and civil center of Florence. The Baptistery is one of the oldest buildings in the city, constructed between 1059 and 1128 in the Florentine Romanesque style. St. John the Beautiful, as Dante called it, is an octagonal building 25.6 meters across. The three entryways were adorned with beautiful bronze doors, whose originals are now preserved in the museum. The south pair molded with episodes of the life of the Baptist were made between 1330 and 1336 by Andrea Pisano. The north doors with stories of Christ by Lorenzo Ghiberti in the 1400s and the eastern pair renamed to the Gates of Paradise, the Renaissance masterpiece of Ghiberti are ornamented with 10 stories from the Old Testament. Up to 1935, the baptistery was the only place where Florentines were baptized. As a consequence, poet Dante Alighieri, famous Renaissance artist Amerigo Vespucci, members of the Medici, Medici family and more were all baptized in this baptistery. This baptistery is crowned by a magnificent mosaic ceiling, which was under construction at the time when I visited. The mosaic ceiling was created over the course of a century in several different phases. The completion of the first phase of mosaics must fall within the Ghibelline phase of Florentine rule between 1238 and 1250. Then there is the Last Judgment, created by Jacobus and his workshop, which is the largest and most important spiritual image created in the baptistery. The majestic bell tower of the cathedral is known as Giotto's bell tower, is a masterpiece of the Italian Gothic. 
The summit can be reached by climbing a stairway of 414 steps, which passes through three superimposed loggias, all offering splendid panoramic views. The construction of the bell tower was entrusted in 1334 to Giotto, the most important artist then living, whose name is forever linked with this structure. Giotto provided the plan for the tower and began the construction. Upon his death, three years later, with only the first level started, the task passed to his pupil Andrea Pisano and then to Francesco Talenti, who completed the building in 1359. The tower has 12 bells, the five oldest are now in disuse, one of them called the Apostolic, cast in 1401 by Niccolo and Luca Bondigi of Cortona, can be admired along the visit path. I would say it's definitely worth a visit for these fantastic views. When I was entering the building, I didn't have to queue, but by the time we managed to get out due to the emergency situation, the queue kind of piled up. And this is actually not unusual. I have seen many queues in front of the bell tower and also the cathedral of people trying to enter. And you can wait at the cathedral up to 40 minutes to be able to enter. To access the monument of Piazza del Duomo, you will need one of the passes available, either the Brunelleschi Pass, the Giotto Pass or the Ghiberti Pass. I had the Brunelleschi Pass, which gives you the full experience of the monuments, the baptistery, the bell tower, Brun Brunelleschi's dome. So you can walk up to the top of the cathedral into the dome. The Opera del Duomo Museum and the ancient basilica of Santa Reparata. The ticket is valid for three days. You will, however, have to select a day and time when you will be able to enter the dome of the cathedral. In addition, from the 3rd of May 2023, it is also necessary to book an entry time to the bell tower to avoid this queue situation that you could just see. This pass costs 30 euros and this is the only pass which includes the access to the dome. All other available passes give you access to various combinations of these monuments for a cheaper price. The Santa Maria del Fiore church is one of the largest churches in the world. The cathedral is 153 meters in length and 90 meters wide and it is also 90 meters high from floor to base of the dome lantern. The name Santa Maria del Fiore means Our Lady of the Flower, which alludes to the name of the city Florentia, or City of Flowers, destined to bloom, and to its emblem the Florentine Lily. The first stone of the new cathedral was laid on 8th of September 1296 and was completed on 25th March 1436 when the dome was finished. The external walls are covered in white, red and green marble with geometric figures and stylized flowers. The space is illuminated by 44 stained glass windows developing a design by the main Florentine artists of the 14th century and earliest Renaissance. The Gothic interior is vast and gives an empty impression. The relative bareness of the church corresponds with the austerity of religious life as preached by Girolamo Savonarola. On the walls we can admire works of art from different eras and by different hands, including famous masterpieces from the 15th century, such as the monumental clock frescoed by Paolo Uccello, the gigantic equestrian portraits of John Hawkwood and Niccolo da Tolentino, and the celebratory portrait of Dante Alighieri painted by Domenico di Michelino. Above the door is a colossal cloak face with fresco portraits of four prophets or evangelists by Paolo Uccello. This one-handed liturgical clock shows the 24 hours of the Ora Italica, a period of time ending with sunset at 24 hours. Many decorations in the church, however, have been lost in the course of time or have been transferred to the Museum Opera del Duomo. The ceiling of the dome is decorated with a representation of the Last Judgment, originally left 
Whitewashed following its completion, it was the Grand Duke Cosimo de' Medici I who decided to have the ceiling of the dome painted. This enormous work of 3,600 square meters <laughs> of painted surface was started in 1570 by Giorgio Vasari and would not be completed until 1579. The church did not have a dome after 100 years of construction. It called for an octagonal dome higher and wider than any that had ever been built before. The building of such masonry dome posed many te technical problems. Prunelleschi looked to the great dome of the Pantheon in Rome for solutions. The dome of the Pantheon is a single shell of concrete, the formula for which had long since been forgotten. For the height and breadth of the dome designed by Neri de Fioravanti, starting at 52 meters of ob above the floor and spanning 44 meters, there was not enough timber in Tuscany to build the scaffolding and forms. Prunelleschi chose to follow the design and employ the double shell made of sandstone and marble. A modern understanding of physical laws and the mathematical tools for calculating stresses were centuries in the future. Brunelleschi, like all cathedral builders, had to rely on his intuition and whatever he could learn from the large scale, scale models he built himself. If you need coffee or would like to grab a meal, there is this cafe that I recommend, Cafe Rivarno, which is very close to the Dome of Florence. It has various types of coffees, smoothies, juices, breakfast and lunch items. Very cute place, I would say, so it's worth a visit just for that. And you can also have drinks in the afternoon. The Ponte Vecchio or Old Bridge was the only bridge across the Arno River in Florence until 1218. The current bridge was rebuilt after a flood in 1345. During the Second World War it was the only bridge across the river that the fleeing Germans did not destroy. Instead they blocked access by demolishing the medieval buildings on each side. The present construction is a bit of a mystery however. Even though Vasari attributed the bridge to 
Santa Deoga did, the construction seems to point more towards the involvement of Dominican friars with their keen sense of proportion, harmony and use of numbers. We do know, however, that the fridge was built as a system of defense and the windows and artistic elements that we can admire now were added after the shops were sold to the merchants. When the Medici moved from Palazzo Vecchio to Palazzo Pitti, they decided they de needed a connecting route from the Uffizi to the Palazzo Pitti. The result was the Vasari Corridor, which runs over the little goldsmith's shops on the bridge. There have been shops on the bridge since the 13th century. Initially, there were butchers and fishmongers and later tanners. However, in 1593, Ferdinand I decreed that only goldsmiths and jewelers would be allowed to have their shops on the bridge in order to improve the well-being of all. And now let's move to one of the last sites that I have visited, which is the San Miniato al Monte, which is a basilica in Florence, standing atop one of the highest points in the city. It has been described as one of the most xenic churches in Italy. I just sent to the church there is a cloister and the 45 bishop's palace as well. The whole complex is surrounded by defensive walls which were originally built by Michelangelo during a siege and fortified in 1553 into a true fortress by Cosimo de' Medici I. The walls now enclose a large ornate monumental cemetery, the Porte Sante, laid out in the 19th century. Buried there are Carlo Collodi, the creator of Pinocchio, and film director and opera producer Franco Zeffirelli, among others. It is only a few minutes walk from the Piazzale Michelangelo and it brings you an even better view of the city than down at the Piazzale with less crowds, so I definitely recommend you to go up there to enjoy the view and you can even read a book up there. It has been tested and it worked. <laughs> less crowds, less noise, beautiful view. This is from the Piazzale, so you can now compare the two views. my five day long trip and throughout the four travel vlogs that I created out of my trip I have not given you any pizza recommendations yet so here we go go to the Giotto Pizzeria if you want to have really nice Italian pizza and other Italian specialties and some interesting stuff like a Zaher cake I had the Giotto from the most loved pizza's selection and it was fantastic and the restaurant opens for lunch and dinner for dinner you can arrive as early as 7 p.m and it's a pretty huge place so you can probably get a table without booking or wait a little bit and get a table but of course booking is always recommended so that was it this was my florence trip and my four vlogs from Florence and I'm now heading back to Vienna from the Florence airport it's a direct flight with Austrian Airlines and I hope to be back in Florence again because I really love this city I hope you also enjoyed these videos if you haven't seen the previous ones make sure to check them out and subscribe to my channel if you like travel vlogs as well as other types of videos that you can find on my channel I hope to see you among my subscribers and hit the like button if you liked this video. I hope to see you at my next video. Until then, goodbye.